Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to look at the state of the nation and with the recent address by the president capturing widespread attention and stirring reactions across various sectors and the recent holds to the national protests, several critical issues have come to the forefront that require immediate attention. Among these is the pressuring or the most pressing challenges, including economic stability, security concerns, and other pertinent issues facing the country. In this discussion, we will delve into the pressing matters to gain a clearer understanding of the current state of the nation, and we aim to explore the direction we're heading as a country and evaluate the potential impact of these issues on our collective future. This examination will provide insights into how we can navigate the challenges and work towards sustainable solutions. Now, joining us to have a conversation is Alfred Ogan, is a social commentator. Another guest we have this morning is Dr. Martin Morgan, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, so um, Dr. Martin, I'm, I know that the president has made a speech and of course the protest has been halted for now, even though in some other parts of the country, um, like Kanu, the, the protest is still going on. But I want to get your take on all of this. The president's speech, how did you think um, the government handled the protest? Do you think they should have done something before now that could have averted it? Or, you know, even with the aftermath, the response to the protest, I want to get your take, your take on that this morning. Yeah, once again, we, we saw that the protest was not just a spontaneous protest. Yeah. It was, uh, it was uh, a, a, a notified uh, a, a situation that was given to the government for the past uh, almost three weeks or one month. And uh, I, I feel that uh, instead of looking at it proactively, they were allowed to go to, to snowball to what we have today with 109 senators who are representing the people and the 360 uh, 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 House of Reps. They were able to go to their constituent to go and tell them, look, that this is what is happening. We should be able to see how we can avert this intending process. Yes, really, we are hungry. But that was not done. <coughs> that we were now looking at the peripheral of talking to the traditional rulers and other issues of threat. So uh, that type of situation was not a, 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 a proper engagement. And until the DD came in, because they were not sure whether it would happen and it took place, and that is what is snowballed to it. So in the, protest, in, the, in the process of it, we all waited and I said, I find the father should come and give us a speech. And he gave us a speech and everybody became speechless. So this is the situation we, we find ourselves in that situation that is not really very good now at this moment we are. But I do the, the suspension has done according to the president of asking not to suspend for the people to suspend the protest is listening to it. But there's a lot of dimensions and correlation that have taken to modern democracy, which is not very apt for us in applicability as we have seen here in Nigeria because of a mad handling, because this is where we are now, and we saw a lot of things that are coming home. So for me, in summary, the protest came, but the, the bottom line is that the hunger, you cannot explain hunger. Hunger has no ethnicity, hunger has no religion. So this is where we are saying, but then the problems are still lingering on. But coming up, an antenna will give us some time to look. This is something they will have no anti. Uh, prior to that, of course, or uh, before this situation. So we are still in the like and looking at what will be the next move. All right, so Alfred, do you think that the government now understands what we're talking about or our grievances? Because if we're talking hunger, like Dr. Martin has said, it has no ethnicity, it has no religion. If people are saying they're hungry, it means that they need food and they need you to put certain policies in place that would help that. So from farming um, um, machinery to ensuring that we have security, um, because most farmers cannot go to their farms right now. But do you think that with this protest, the, the government now understands the severity of things in Nigeria? Thank you very much for, for that beautiful question over there. Um, you, you, you talk about if the government now understand what the people want. Yeah. You, you know, the answer, has, the answer is already out there in the public domain. You can get that very quickly from the president's speech. 
uh, of which is he went just uh, you say out of the out of point, out of the demands of what the people are talking about. So you want to ask what are the things that the people are talking about, even if you even if you want to um, uh, give a, a, a blind eye to all of the things that the people are asking us or asking for. How about the one of hunger, which is the immediate immediate one that is needed? Because the people went to the street, they asked questions, they, they, they are lined up of what they, 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 they said they need. You talk about the, the reverse side, the first subsidy hike, that was one of the things that the people were talking about. Um, I want to look at the, the high um, hike in the uh, electric, electric um, um, tariff. tariff that people about today now. Mm. People are asking questions. Where is the the band A, the band B, the band C, the band D? I'm what also asking all that. Those Where are they coming from? Mm. Sorry, I, I didn't hear what you said. No, sorry, I'm sorry. also asking that as well. So go ahead. So, so the, the, the line up of all of these things all. So, but we expect that even if the president was not going to address all of these things, how about the one that has to do with hunger? I myself was present at Ojot at the first day uh, of, of um, uh, 4th of August. I was there repeatedly again. I repeat the same movement again on the second. You need to come and see how people are out, you know. I've been attending protests on before now. You know, I, I was also part of the protests that took place uh, 12 years ago in that same place, in that same grant at Ojota. So, but now this one took a different turn because people are out and they are hungry. Even the policemen, they go to a time I even had to start bringing money for my boss and to even give to the policemen because they even look hungry than we are. So, in the midst of all of these things that people are talking about, you let them all. And, and then, well, the one that has to do with hunger, hunger has no, it, it doesn't know anybody. There is a, there's also a video flying now in the public domain. I don't know if you come across that. Um, you see a uniform man who is also um, um, hijacking rice in the street and taking it home. That is to tell you that Honga knows nobody, knows no officer, he knows no uniform man, he knows nobody. Mm. And this is what people are saying Honga is in the land. And now you are coming to address us or give a speech as a president, you, you fail to touch that particular part. And, and, and when did we get to all this? Hmm. This is a question asked today. Well, I don't even know <laughs> what to say, but uh, uh, that means the administration does not understand the from the shelf the severity or even what we asked for. Because even before the the protest, uh, I saw governors asking why why are Nigerians going to even protest? They don't even know what we are going to mm. what is. But are we really out of the woods are we really out of danger as it is let me come back to you uh, dr morgan do you think now that the president has called for calm we are really going to enjoy that calm or it is a ticking or time bomb hmm. well i think that they are, they are called for calm for me i think uh, i will just look at it as an integral of a situation whereby where we just have a temporary guest. So we are going to re-amend the speech and simplify and come and give a proper speech to the public. Because for instance, we talk about the, the fuel. The fuel was announced on the day the, it was sworn in. But what I was expecting the speech to be more engaging was fine. We are listening to what you are saying. But the fuel, this is the timeline. This is what we are going to do that our refineries are going to work in the next three, uh, three months to two months so that they will be able to have a lot of surplus, which will, the market forces will be able to force down the, the prices of fuel. I think these are some of these narrations we will be able to, to uh, expect to get. Then yeah. we talk about the food farm. They said they have 10 million hectares of land. 10 million hectares of land, it's not like you trying to price the fish inside water. You don't even know what are the what are the process, what are the other things put in place? Fine. I have 10 million of hectares in location A, B, C, D, and this is what we are going to do. I'm asking the 724 local government to start embarking on the, on the state agricultural extensions or whatever. So in that situation, we expect that the food situation will come to good. They are also looking at the law to ensure that the rural development rules are all linked up. To enable up to transform this food from uh, the products from one point to another point, this was an easy situation we are. So I'm appealing to you that within a particular period of say 
from now to December or from now to November, go back home. I expect that this food will be surplus and put in a mechanism to see how we should be able to curtail the profit theory that was obtainable in the various market. These are some of the narrations I think that that should have been more understood to enable the people to really uh, understand that this is where that there is an engagement in the same as people. So but when you get disconnected, just like what happened in the Revolution Francais, in the French Revolution, you know, when the people say they are hungry, they don't have bread, and when they say they can't eat the food, they should go and get cake. So this is how the situation, so that is why it snowballed to that point of level, because the, the engagement was not to that point. So we are talking about the for, uh, FDI, so at this point, we'll be able to get these uh, foreigners come back and invest, those companies who have left, we are trying to move them back. So these are the type of engagement communications. This is how we expect that when you engage a hungry people, a hungry set of people, so the man who is hungry is reasoning is on his stomach at that moment in time. So you'll be able to see this and yes, he has tried, but let us see that. But when you come on that way with uh, what the French call bride de fer, come in a crackdown situation, it makes it very difficult for people to really understand that yeah, this is high. That is why people got angry to that point and it got to a point that people started looting because there was no proper communication. But the solution has uh, as if you are getting out of the wood. Yes, like I say, we are getting up. If at all the policies and the statement were going to be amended and action taken, we are talking about the governance. We are saying yes, for the governance, I'm going to reduce XYZ Ministry of March them in consonant to Restanya panel and see how we can do it to save money to move on or move on and put it into another sector. So that like, just like the way it's being done in the educational area that there's a fund for this. So these are the type of nuances. People intend to list it when you are communicating because the policies are not are what people got angry. And this takes me back to the issue because most of our political parties are not ideologically based and they have no proper communication, they're not personalized. This is where we find ourselves. But meanwhile, we are the what the military will call center row. Center row, no open rules, backward, no open rules, front. So we are just in the middle and we are waiting for the next line of action. So this is the situation we have. Yeah, but he said that uh, two FDIs have been gained by the, the country. They are, they are now investing a lot of billions, though he didn't mention the name. And so many people were saying, uh, most times when they mention the name, the people they are mentioning come out and say, we have not done any business with the federal government and all that. But mm. is it that you're, you don't believe that the FDIs he was talking about is true? Well, it's a, it's a matter of trust. There's a disconjecture, uh, disconjecture disconnection, a disconnection that has been happened between the people in terms of what are the administration they are putting as related to trust. Because as you see, there's something I will tell you, I will take you hook, like a sinker. But there's one you tell me, I need to close my mouth and understand whether really my brains are really uh, assimilating it to that point for me. I should take. So this is where it is. Fine, we are not disputing what the, 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 the top man have said. We are not disputing the game. But let us see that yeah, those things come up and become real. And because most of the time now, people are very much careful. They are not really trusting a lot of things because they know that antecedents have shown that some of these things are not very practicable in the way that we, we see them. Mm. All right. So, Alfred, uh, I know that the president, well, he has said that we, needed, we need to be patient. So, um, they've been in office for over a year. And one thing that they've said over time is, you need to be patient, tighten up your belts. You know, there are going to be a lot of things that would happen. And we're seeing those things happen, especially with fuel subsidy being gone. And that has just been a ripple effect to every other thing and even our economy. But a lot of people, on the other hand, are saying, you are asking us to be patient. You are asking us to tighten up our belts, but you're not doing the same. Cost of governance is so so high and we expect you to reduce that cost of governance what are the things you think the government needs to start to look at especially if they want to build a trust between the nigerian government and the people is that question for me or yes, yes yes for, for you. you alfred see the, the most important thing of uh, of all you know are these things you cannot continue to say that the masses should i mean uh, tighten their belt why you are doing you are taking the wrong steps and then these are the things that we're talking about uh, one of the things that we took out to the street i, I failed to mention them we were talk, also considering the fact that look um uh, cutting that course of uh, um you know governance then you cannot have 
the, the salary of the, of the of the people who are working directly with the with the, with the president. You can if you come out now with your, that speech, well, these are the things we're expecting from that speech from uh, Mr. President. Okay, fine. I have cut down the cost of governance. I have cut down this the House of Representatives, the House of this from 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 the Senate down to uh, 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 local government chairman. If you have come up with something of such uh, on that same speech, by now people might would have come down a bit. Mm. But when you have failed to do all of these things that the people are expecting you to do, that is brought back to having a direct communication with the people who are concerned, the people who are out there in the street. You have not had that. How the, the, the likes of the bad government, uh, uh, the likes of um, uh, um, former President Jonathan, Jonathan was able to manage protests all this while? See, the, the current administration needs to prove to us that no, they, they are capable to do all of these things. We, the people gathered over the times, they say, look, the fuel price is high. What did Jonathan do? He listened to the people. At that same point, where the protest was still on, he, he came out again and cut down the price of, of fuel. Now, if you're saying that fuel has gone up to, and uh, some persons are saying they are buying for 800, some are saying they are buying 1,000. We don't even have a price um, um, uh, control over the fuel price again. It's the same administration who came up uh, with a different price list that I've not seen since I was giving birth to in this country. I've not seen it before. The way you, you say Abuja is selling for social amount of money, Lagos will be selling for social amount of money, uh, but that court will sell for social amount of money. What happened to those lists that, mm. that, was, that was published out? Every state has it. How come that that, that could not manage that? Uh, uh, what happened? The, that, the, the way they could manage that, you put that list, you, you split it out to all the, the 36 states in, uh, in the country. It was all of the moon. Before you know, they didn't keep to read. Who are the people that are set to uh, uh, the price control? Are they not people who are meant to manage all of these things? When all of these things are not being done, the fuel is even the most important thing of all. If the, 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 the present administration can, can, can bring it down, even if you can't take it back to where it was before. How about, I was expecting in that speech, okay, fine, the fuel will not be sold for 800 again. The fuel is coming down now, either 500 or 400. People cannot say, yes, this man is communicating with us. But in a, in a, in, in a situation like this, when you have chaos all over the state, and the president is out with a speech that, that address not, totally none of what we are talking about, you, you, you end up leaving people in another state of um, 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 chaos, and they're planning, planning to re reinforce and come back again, even if you call off the, 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 the protests. Well, well I, I think, can I, ask, can I ask something to what he's trying yes, to say? Yes, please okay. go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, I think uh, what uh, uh, Fred is saying, so that was a true situation. That reminds us of the story or the philosophy of the stoic and the Pigoyans. If you are telling you how to tighten up the belt, and then you stand even like an epicorean with a level of opulence, then the stoic man that has the sensibility of uh, not feeling the pains, how do they relate on the same pathway? Because, like, it's mentioned about the, uh, the petroleum uh, pricing. They are not telling us that the petroleum price equalization, the weather fall or whatever formula, have not been able to adjust because of the bridging nature of taking it from here to up north. But because it has a logistic end. That's it boils down to the issue of that fueling and the appropriate pricing for our petroleum product. Which we not to understand how much does it take you to get a liter of fuel? How much does it take you to, to produce a liter of fuel in the refineries? Mm -hmm. I am very certain that if you are having a level of that support level where our refineries are all working and uh, with another back off from Mr. Dan would tell them. The price would automatically crash. But making it an, a cast of stone, that no, we cannot go back because we are getting this at uh, uh, semi uh, so, 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 price, so, we cannot take it. So, there's a lot of uh, monstrous approaches to it that is not well uh, that too. That is why I say we should be able to understand the philosophy of the Epicureans mm -hmm. and the Stoics. So, how Stoic are we going to be? And how Epicureans are they going to be in the openness uh, vis a vis of when we are going to tighten it? But you can already tighten your belt if the holes are still available. I say you have to insert a lot of hole. But you need to leave to tighten your belt. That is the situation we are facing ourselves. I think that is the more interesting on, on that level. Yeah, well, but to be fair, the, the president told us when uh, at inauguration that the uh, false subsidy has gone and he knows that there, is, there are going to be a lot of people that will protest 
uh, but nothing can be done about it. He said that. <laughs> we remember just yeah. that. Uh, we did not expect. Yeah, this our politicians kind of uh, have have grown to uh, to know that um, our our memory of history is very short. So they they use that against us. He did say that. So to be fair to him, he told he told us from the beginning yeah. and all that. But forging ahead is what we are we are yes. looking at. Yes. You want yes, to I, I think uh, you are right. Though all the three presidential candidates, as at that time, they have the first subsidy issue out. No, he so said. Now, he he said, said even though there are going to be protests, so there's nothing that can be done about it. That's what I'm saying. But something done now. Something is being done now. You see the clip that is going viral, uh, where you have uh, the people from the north now, our brothers from the north, hijacking the the, the police uh, truck and yeah. taking it and going about. So things are being done. If you are, if care is not taken, uh, it might continue like that. It might litter like that. Other state might join because they are seeing that look. If this state, for example, Kaduna is doing this and they are getting away with it, other state too might decide to, to come out again and start uh, behaving that uh, because why he said that nothing will be done. Hmm. No, I, I, so, I think for me, uh, Fred, my own understanding here is that if first uh, if you are protesting for a noble reason. There's a difference between protesting and rioting and looting. Yeah. Those three things cannot be put in the same like, uh, 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 machine to say that they are the same. Like what you say, the re inference you are making in Kaduna, to my mind, is that the extreme level of uh, protest, there is more rioting and breaking up the total law of order. Protest is within the confine of the law, the framework. But then we will not allow such noble cause to be hijacked or infiltrated by any other orchestrated group whereby we make it to go against anarchy. This is a situation we should be able to understand. You make you make your demand, we are making our demand or the people are making our demand positively, but in making it in the confine of the laws. I think that would have been better. Like what's happening in the north, honestly, is not protest. That is rioting and looting and which is very, very but, but doctor, 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 doctor just Doctor, the concern is the concern is this protest was supposed to be a protest, and from the get go, yeah. uh, the, the the government instead of looking for ways to douse the tension, where they kept saying it will be hijacked, it will be hijacked, and then actually one of the governors came out to say that this idea was brought by the APC government that they should have counter protesters on the same days. Mm -hmm. In fact. After, apart from having those people come to counter the protest, which they knew will result in violence, violence they yeah. also had even the traditional institution jettison their values and brought the Oro Oro Festival, Festival at the time that they're supposed to be. So, so many other uh, organizations that we have not even heard about before came out and said they were distancing themselves. So they were paid people that were, well, that is the perception, that people were being paid to mm. come and uh, discourage the protest instead of addressing the issues. So in a situation like that, even when you know that the protest is a legitimate right of the people, how else can you address these problems that should have been addressed by protest? If the government is the only one that yeah. in this, uh, themselves. Yes, I, I think, like I said, if you, if you listen to my opening sample, I said the, the government has not been proactive in handling the situation. That is why it escalated out to that point of level. Now, I agree. Yes, we, we are in a situation, in a dark situation whereby we are agitating for something positive for us. And now it fell on the deaf ear. So at the extreme, people got more angry, maybe in angrier in that situation. And that we, now, if you look at the situation we are in now, sorting out, like what my brother Fred was trying to say, that others still will copy. Yes, it will copy, but then it will not all go away. It will not all go away. We are making can make a peaceful protest with that infiltration being orchestrated by some group of people. It is where we are now seeing that we are using protest to count uh, to add that protest it become very mathematical. S cancel S, Y cancel I, uh, Y. So this is the situation theory that are now coming to uh, into the governance or management of a situation of an aggrieved people. But it shouldn't have been so. That shouldn't have been so because they didn't know my So they are fine. So for me. It's saying a, a, a great direction. Some people were even, they were on, on screen, on live screen, and we saw that they were saying they were paying five, five thousand, four thousand naira. Yeah. And then they just need to collect it. Right. Them. To, they, they need it also to eat. Yes. I think it was there on the national, various screen took it. 
So it's not something that is silly. It can be orchestrated in that way to infiltrate and make you look bad. It's a part of delicate setting wherever somebody can infiltrate. It's happened in the World War II. It happened in the World War II where touching has to now paint out some of the aircraft and then to the to the German colonel uh, and bomb other areas, and the whole war goes against them and start bombing Germany and of Hitler. So it's a situation whereby it's available in that way. It's not All right. a outdated uh, scenario, but it's a possibility. But okay. we're not talking about hunger, protests in the legitimate way, which have been infiltrated in good, but maybe an orchestrated people who wanted to also counter the protests with protests. Mm. So it was a total mismanagement in the, in the whole world, total mismanagement. Oh, terrible presidents. Terrible presidents is what our concern is. It's very terrible. <laughs> All right, Alfred, in about 30 seconds, what's the way forward as we wrap it up now? They, they, they should learn how to manage the people that are coming out in, for protests. Mm. It's been done before in this country. The Jonathan administration did it very well. They should learn from such uh, um, uh, you know, past um, uh, administration that I was able to handle it well. Yeah. You see a video also flying now, saying, you know, uh, from the, uh, the Air Force and then the police. You look at all of these bridges. He's saying, look, I, am, I, I want to be as a buffer in between uh, uh, the police and then the people. And you, as you continue throwing tear gas and shooting at them, you, you watch a clip that is at the public, that is out there in the public domain now. The soldier man was shot. The first man was telling to tell the police, stop throwing tear gas at them. I, have, I was discussing with them before. They were listening to me. But when you, your, your people refused to, to listen to the instruction I gave, I said, stop throwing tear gas at them and stop shooting at them. These are the things. They should learn how to do all of these things that are needful so that they can dialogue with them. Before now, we had uh, the TSS came out and drove a, drove a statement and said, look, they know the organizers. The organizers are not busy. They are out there. Call them for a meeting. A personal yeah. meeting. Discuss with them. All right. Way forward. And then listen to all of the things that they demand that they are, that they are, that they are, that they are writing out for, for the government to, to, to do. Listen to them and then pick out, negotiate with them the ones you can do. All right, my, thank my you. Last take here is that the immediate cut in the salary of um, and the allowance of public officers, uh, holder and the um, and, and the top government officials. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. I think dialogue is important, and you know the government needs to be open for criticism as well. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful thank day. You. Have a wonderful day. All right, we've been speaking with Alfred Ogan. He's a social commentator, and Dr. Martin Morgan is a public affairs analyst. And we've just been looking at the aftermath of the protest. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic, which talks about the Igbo referendum. Please stay with us.